fellow Dream Chasers and Disney fans across the world, and welcome to this Christmas special of Kingdom of Isolation, hence the Christmas jumpers. We're in times of trouble, why not isolate yourself with the magic of Disney? And, and for this Christmas special, we've gone for an all-time classic. It is, of course, Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, released in 1993, released in 94 in the UK, and it's the di directorial debut of Henry Selick, who we know from James and the Giant Peach and Coraline. And uh, yes, we actually, I actually have my guest on camera for the first time. Well, technic, well, uh, I'm trying, trying to, trying to word this out. Uh, I'll say, uh, I've had my mum on this uh, previously for Saludos Amigos from Three Caballeros. Uh, those are up on my channel right now, if you guys um, uh, uh, want to, uh, want to look at that um so uh with that in mind uh i'm going to introduce you to my uh my, my christmas guest there uh, he was on uh this uh he was on this podcast a few episodes back when we discussed bambi and dumble it is of course from movies and milk mr michael mcgory michael welcome back to the show Hello again. I'm excited to be here, especially for the festive season. Let's let's get this Christmas special underway. Yeah, absolutely. You got any plans for the Christmas period? Um, right now, just working. Um, uh, I'm working in a toy store at the moment, uh, temporary mm -hmm. night staff. So it's, mm. as yeah. you can imagine, it's fairly busy. So yeah, yeah, like, uh, yeah, yeah. Smith's Toy Superstores. Uh, believe it or not, folks. So anyway, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, stop motion masterpiece. I mean, I mean, I mean we yes. actually lost, we actually lost count of how many times Matthew Coleman said that during the 30 day movie challenge back at the summer. <laughs> yes, <laughs> masterpiece, yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh so, I love me stop motion. Yeah, yeah I, say, I say stop motion is one of those forms of animation that regardless of how old the film is, it still holds up today. I mean, perfect examples of yes. that, Chicken Run and Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Were-Rabbit. Yes, even the earlier Wallace and Gromit shots uh, still hold up very well yeah, today. Gra yeah, Grand Day Out, Wrong Trousers, Close Shave, and then, of course, 2008 with A Matter of Loaf and Death, which, interesting factoid yes. about that one, that was the most viewed program throughout the whole year in 2008. Uh, well, I watched it, so it, it wouldn't be hard to see why. I only tend to watch the most viewed things on the TV. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but of course, given this, given the way this year's panned out, it's given us a chance to actually uh, go into the archives and uh, dig up some of our favourites from uh, years gone by. But anyway, a uh, little bit of history about this film first before we actually get discuss uh, the, the uh, plot line of... Uh, uh, the film. Oh, before I forget, spoiler alert in case anybody somehow still hasn't seen it. Get on it if you haven't. It's the best time to watch it. Yeah, absolutely. I was actually going to have this as the Halloween special with Jack McDonald, uh, another good friend of ours, uh, for the Halloween special. But uh, because of time restrictions, we weren't able to get a time where we could actually uh, get to, um, to actually uh, do a call like this to be able to uh, discuss the film so, so we figured keep it for christmas because it actually works for both halloween and christmas if you think about it yeah perfect november movie i think the november being the month in between the two holidays that does make sense yeah that works yeah yes i mean i, I watched it back towards the end of november there and um yeah still you can watch it at any point within this three months you can even watch it in easter the Easter Bunny makes a wee cameo appearance. Yes, so. it does. Yes. <laughs> Watch yeah, Easter um, if you want. <laughs> also, albeit in um, some pretty bizarre circumstances, which we'll yes. get into uh, <laughs> shortly. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, this is the di directorial debut of uh, Henry Selleck, a longtime uh, collaborator with uh, uh, Tim Burton. Tim Burton, I mean, where, do we, where do we start with his resume? 1989 Batman, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Corpse Bride. We could be here all day. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, he's one of my... Well, until recently, he was one of my favourite filmmakers. He has made a couple of blunders in these past few years, but... Yeah, that... Especially back in his early days. This this yeah. was peak Tim Burton when this came out. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, of course, and of course, as far as the soundtrack is concerned, I mean, if it's a Tim Burton film, nine times out of ten, you're going to have Danny Elfman on board doing the music. Yes. One of my favourite composers, still to this day, one of my favourite composers. 
I and just love his it, crazy, wild sensibilities. And it's and, and it's hard to argue with that. So anyway, let's not waste any more time. Let's go through the entire story of the Nightmare Before Christmas. So let's kick off. Um, so let's kick off with the very first song of uh, the of the film. It's uh, of course, this is Halloween. This is Halloween. Pumpkin scream in the dead of night. Don't be too, don't be too surprised, folks, if I actually start singing uh, the songs that are actually uh, in the film. There are quite a few songs in this. Oh film. yes. So, so anyway, this is Halloween. This is where we get introduced to Halloween Town, and of course, before that, we see the various trees that lead us to various um, holiday-related areas. You've got you've got to, you've got an Easter egg for Easter Town. You've got a turkey for Thanksgiving Town somehow, um, and there you've got Saint Patrick as well. Yeah, the the clover. Yes, the, and you've got of course the Christmas tree for Christmas Town, and then you've got the pumpkin for Halloween Town, Halloween and then we Town. get, and then towards the end of this is Halloween, we get introduced to Jack the Pumpkin King, voiced by none other than Chris Sarandon, who, and uh, Danny Elfman, believe it or not, folks, actually did the singing voice for him, as we'll find, as we'll see later on in the film. Yes. And from there, it gets to a point where it's a, it's a great Halloween, as always, but Jack gets somewhat of a change of heart, and that's where we get Jack's lament uh, coming into play. Uh, so not too long after this is Halloween, uh, where he actually wants to make uh, some sort of changes to um, Halloween Town, and that's when he gets the idea of heading elsewhere, heads to... Uh, heads to uh, Christmas Town, and that's when we get uh, what's this? What's this? There's color everywhere. What's this? What's this? this? There's There's bright things in the air. What's this? I can't believe my eyes. I must be dreaming. Must wake, be up, dreaming. Jack, wake up, Jack. This isn't fair. What's this? What's this? <laughs> yeah, I'll say, I'll say that, that song. <laughs> that, that, is, that is probably one of the most iconic songs from the uh, this is Halloween. What's this? And another song we'll get to later on. But before I think I know we get, what one you're talking about, but we'll wait. We'll get, we'll wait get to that. We'll get to that later. But uh, then we get introduced to some of the other. We get introduced to some of the other characters of uh, the uh, of Halloween Town. You've got Sally, who's voiced by Catherine O'Hara. Catherine O'Hara, who was also Kevin McAllister's mum in Home Alone's one and two. She was also. Uh, she had also co-starred in a previous Tim Burton project in uh, Beetlejuice back in 1988. Love them all. I love Catherine O'Hara. I love Beetlejuice. I love the first two Home Alone movies. <laughs> I mean, Fantastic I actress. Yeah, absolutely. And then, and then we get introduced to uh, um, introduced to her father. Uh, I say I say that in air quotes because not really a very good father <laughs> figure. Doctor Finkelstein, only mentioned by name once throughout the film, believe it or not. And he's actually, in the credits, he's actually credited as the evil scientist, voiced by uh, William Hickey. Um, have you heard of the original ending to this movie? Are you wanting to get into that right now, or will we get into that later when we discuss the ending? Uh, well, well, I, th I think probably be best to discuss that when we get to the, uh, yeah. uh, the ending itself. Because right. other otherwise we'd be a little bit all over the place. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then we, and then uh, so some of the other characters uh, we have: uh, Glenn Shadix voicing the mayor of Halloween Town. Very unique design for the mayor of Halloween Town. Uh, it's, it's basically the equivalent of uh, Two Face from the Batman franchise. Yes, yes, it's very in touch with today's politics. I feel. Yeah, sounds um, about right. But uh, um, <laughs> they probably be best not to go into the political. Yes, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, side of things. But uh, Shadix was Shadix also collaborated with Burton on their. Uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Uh, as well. Um, uh, oh, and uh, we also and uh, Danny Elfman also voices uh, one of the trick or treaters working for uh, somebody later on in the oh, film. What does he? Yep. Lock, stock, and barrel. One of them. Yes, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. barrel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, Catherine O'Hara uh, voices uh, Shock as well. I don't so, even know. They, I don't even know. They done different voices that's that's interesting yeah 
uh, let's say there's, there's a couple of other characters we get uh, introduced. There's a couple of other characters here. We'll, we'll get to them shortly. And we've got Paul yeah. Rubens, who voices Locke, the last of the um, um, the last of the uh, trio. Uh, Rubens and Burton also worked to. Uh, and I think is it, you can tell Burton went for some pre. People, people he previously worked with, judging by the cast right. list, because Paul Rubens also worked with Burton on Pee Wee's Big Adventure when Paul was uh, Pee Wee Herman, and uh, was also in uh, Batman Returns. And uh, one of my favorite films from childhood, where you had Paul as one of the FBI agents in Matilda. Matilda. Yes. I like, yes. I, like, I cannot. I, like, I can't get through the scene where. Matilda is at the library getting the books. I can't physically get through that scene without a big Cheshire cat grin on my face and <laughs> getting somewhat uh, misty-eyed. Nostalgic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, and the music at that point as well. It oh, just, yes. it, oh, it's yes. one of my favourite films growing up. And, uh, it's a shame last... it's not a Disney movie and we can't discuss it. But well... Yeah. But uh, the last character we'll, be introduced, we'll get introduced to for now is Zero, who is Jack Skellington's dog, voiced by Frank Welker. I mean, Frank Welker is one of those voice acting legends. He's done many a voice over the years. He's, he's been yes. in various Disney projects. He's been the voice of Fred from Scooby-Doo since it started back in 1969. And he's still going to this day. Yes, playing Scooby-Doo in the recent Scooby-Doo movie, Scoob, I believe. Yes, I did. Actually, yes, I did watch that uh, recently, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. All right, I've not checked it, out. I say it may, I say it may very well feature in my top ten films of uh, twenty twenty, folks, um, which you'll see on New Year's Eve. Good stuff. So, so stay tuned Can't for that. For that one. So anyway, uh, that's the characters introduced. So once, so once Jack's been to, once Jack's been to Christmas Town, he returns with a sled. And he decides, let's make, let's have Halloween Town celebrate Christmas this year. And everyone in the town sets to work, putting their Halloween-esque twist on uh, stocking fillers and presents for mm -hmm. uh, Christmas. And uh, this is where Jack's plan somewhat, um, I'll say, uh, interesting uh, for... Uh, for, uh, I've forgotten the character's name. Flipping hamburgers. Hang on a second. Uh, but, but, but Sally, that's the one. Uh, Sally. Sally ends up having uh, a couple of visions, uh, and it's and it shows that uh, Jack's plan may very well um... not end as cheery as Jack might have hoped. Yeah, let's just say it's not. Let's just say the vision shows the plan not quite well going to plan. Yes. Uh, but yeah, and uh, Jack ends up uh, ignoring these warnings from uh, Sally, even when, even when he takes the role of uh, Santa Claus or Sandy Claus, as he uh, <laughs> uh, calls him, which is where Lock, Stock, and Barrel come into play, because uh, he gets them to capture uh, Santa. And on top of that, that this is where the Easter Bunny cameo comes into play. They capture someone, they say, we got him, and then comes out the bag, and then lo and behold, it's the Easter Bunny, and Jack's like, you had one job, people. You had one job, guys. That is not Sandy Claus. That is the Easter Bunny. Which door did you go through? That's probably when my favourite, um, not even a side character, he's pretty much just... He's always in the background, pretty much. It's the guy with the axe in his head. Ah, yes. He, he's, he's the one that shouts, Bunny. Every ah, time I yes. I know, film, I know the one you're on about, yeah. <laughs> every time I see him in the film, I crack up because he's always just got that dead expression on his face. And it's yeah. Just say, I don't even, I don't think the character has a name, but uh, no, say, he's always been one of my favourites. Uh, the dead expression on his face, which actually helps to the somewhat deadpan delivery of the line. Yes. <laughs> even though he's not expressing it in his face, you can actually hear it in the voice somewhat. Yeah. He's excited, yes. <laughs> yeah. No, say, but, then, but then they managed to capture, um, they managed to capture Santa and Jack tells him, good news, sir. You have got this year off. I'll be taking over this year. And then... When he 
and then when he has uh, so, uh, skeleton esque skeleton reindeers, um, then you have the mist and fog coming into play, which mm. is another part of uh, Sally's vision, and it sort of mirrors Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, where yes. Zero takes the role of Rudolph because of his glowing nose. And yes, then, which is a jack-o'-lantern. I just noticed that in my most recent view, and his nose is a jack-o'-lantern. I didn't actually so pick like, up on that when I watched it. Uh, if, if you look very closely, especially in that moment, you can see like it's a wee pumpkin with carvings in it. It's, it's that very, is, very that's very clever. Very yes. clever. I mean, ma massive kudos to the team for being able to uh, animate that because uh, the production actually started uh, somewhere between 1990 and 1991, and because with it being stop motion, it would have take it would have taken ages oh, yes. to get it put together. A budget of 26 million dollars, and throughout its cinema throughout its theatrical run, 91 million dollars, and it actually got nominated for an Oscar for best visual effects, which was a first for uh, animated films. Good stuff. Fantastic. Yeah. It's because of that nose. <laughs> yeah. That's the reason why they got the nomination. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Yeah. So, so, so while, so while all this is, uh, while all this is happening, we, uh, this is when we get introduced to possibly one of the most um, iconic villains with a very, iconic song uh we we have lock stock and barrel pushing uh, santa down this chute and and because of how large santa is uh, granted he granted he does eat a lot of mince pies <laughs> so goodness knows how he manages to fit down all those chimneys every year <laughs> and then and then, of course, the music builds up doors open the dice come in and it rolls on what Snake Eyes, we get introduced to the one and only Mr. Oogie Boogie. Well, 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 what have we here? Santa Claus, huh? Ooh, I'm really scared. So you're the one everybody's talking about. I mean, just that song alone, that would be an amazing showstopper if someone performed it on stage. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And you're... you're uh... Your performance there was very good. I think you should take that on tour, son. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to keep that in mind because uh, because uh, uh, I've got I've got a couple of things in mind where uh, if I play my cards right, I might be able to do a somewhat of somewhat of a, a Disney show where I do um, where where I'm on stage performing various uh, Disney songs. I might put that one into the set list. Ah, you put that one in. Uh, yeah, you've done a very good rendition there. I applaud you. <laughs> I'll be there, front row and centre. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, well, well. So con considering my, um, uh, considering considering the fact that I've got plenty of experience being on stage from various uh, from various shows when I did acting and performance at uh, college, and of course, just uh, just my love for music in yes. general. Yes, very good. Yeah. So then we see. So then we see uh, Jack doing what Santa normally does, down the chimney, presents under the tree, and he actually hands a couple of presents to uh, some of the um, uh, kids, and we actually see it play out, and <laughs> all hell breaks loose, and then you end up with my good, and then you end up my goodness me. Uh... <laughs> One of my favourite scenes, I think. One of my favourite scenes. Are you talking about the bit where the kid gets a a wee severed head and he's. He's, yeah, uh, I say, I say, that, 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 yeah say, that that's the sort that's the catalyst for for everything kicking off, uh, and then you get uh, then you've got a, somebody in a police station just getting calls every from everyone with the same problem: uh, uh, imposter Santa, imposter Santa, imposter Santa. Yeah, I, say, yes, yes. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I say, I say. But say, actually, I'd say talking to post, talking to imposters, they'll be like, uh, skeleton guy sus. If, you, if you've not played, if you, uh, if you've not played Among Us, guys, you probably won't get that reference. 
I'm, a, I'm an Among Us fanatic, so... Yeah. That, no, that's, 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 that game only... That game was released in uh, 2018, but it just blew up in popularity this year. As, and and it actually, it's actually been nominated for a couple of um, uh, awards at the uh, the Game Awards, which uh, take place later this week. All right. Well, I wish it the very best of luck. Yeah. That's it. I say, I say that, that, that. I mean, that's. I mean, that's. That's one of the great things that's happened this year. I mean, I mean, you just have these games that just come out of nowhere and just explode in uh, popularity. Yes. Uh, I say, but there, there was one game that fans were that pe- the people were very excited about when it was announced. It was uh, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, and it was actually <laughs> throughout August. It was the free game for PlayStation Plus subscribers, which I took advantage of. And sometimes it can be frustrating, especially that infamous slime climb those hammers at the end oh! <laughs> but it but it is a lot of fun T- takes a few pages out of uh, Takashi's castle and uh, total wipeout especially the spinning bar what you call it yes yes anyway back to the film yes of course um <laughs> and, and then it's and then you, and then it gets to the point where the military gets involved and they yes. manage to shoot Jack's sled down. Yes. And then, and then he's, and then, and Jack's just like, yeah, what have I done? Mm-hmm. And then he sing, he sings a song. Yeah. I forget what it's called. Is it Jack? No, it's not Jack's Lament. What is it called? Uh, no, no, that, that's the, uh, it's, uh, it's poor old Jack. Poor, yes. Yes. Poor old Jack. Yeah. Um, I really like that song. Yeah, it's, I think it's one of the more underrated songs in the soundtrack. Yeah, definitely. Um, I just like the way it ends. How he's he's mm-hmm. building confidence again, and then he's like, "You know what? I might have messed up, but I give it a try." Yeah, no time and to go back home. Yeah, and there's still time to save Christmas, and that's and then you end up as uh, oh, and I forgot to mention the voice actors for uh, Santa and uh, Oogie Boogie. Uh, Ken Page is the guy that voices uh, Oogie Boogie, and we've got Ed Ivory. Who is the uh, the voice of Santa? So, Santa. so that's so that's all the uh, that's all the voice actors uh, out of the way. So then we get to the climax of the film, where every where everyone is mourning the death of uh, Jack Skellington until he manages until he comes back, and then it's a and then it's a somewhat of a some of a, a short final battle with them um, yes. Boogie Boogie, but. But, but like I said, there's, there's one little bit uh, where Sally tries to uh, save Santa with the help of Lock, lock Shock and Barrel. Uh, but that goes that goes uh, downhill. And then they, Santa and Sally almost end up in, uh, in the um, lava-esque uh, pit. And yes. then... And, and then... Okay, it's one of, my, one of my favorite scenes. I'm actually... Uh, uh, wh- when I do get to do this, uh, uh, Mr. Oogie Boogie's song at uh, uh, on stage, I'm actually going to have a pair of dice in my hand. Nobody's going to be able to see it apart from me. Uh, it might be on Snake Eyes. It might not. But we'll we'll see. We'll we'll roll right. with. We'll just roll with it. We'll roll with it. Roll with it <laughs> yeah. yeah. I say. I say. What? I say. Once the song's finished, uh, I have a look at the dice and I go, "What? Snake Eyes?" And then roll yes. it again. And then make sure it's not as like, and then I'm just like, ah, much better. And then just evil laugh. And then, oh, I was like, just, oh, what a moment that will, what a moment that will be. I was like, but of course, well, I was like, I've got to have, I've got to have suits on, top hat, uh, show cane, oh. the works. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Go fill out. Yeah. I was like, I was like, I was like, like I said, I could, I could make, I could, with me performing on stage, I could make that. A show tune, essentially. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I can't and wait then, to see it. And then when, and then when uh, Oogie Boogie realizes that he didn't hear Santa or Sally falling into the uh, falling into the uh, the lava, we'll, we'll just go with we'll just call it lava. Just lava as, a, as a, if 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 we're wrong, we apologize. And then. He flips that. He flips the board round, and then boom, Jack's there, and and Oogie's like, "What?" And yes. then, and then that's where the, and then that's where the uh, somewhat final battle kicks in, where you've got the the cards, the 
uh, the shooters, and then you've got the spinning blades as well, which yes. could be a bit of a bit of a problem. And then, and then once, and then, and then Ugi is uh, on top of a fan, and then, yes. and then Jack sees uh, a thread. Uh, which uh, wow, uh, didn't think that would be. <laughs> didn't think this would be uh, a bit of uh, foreshadowing. Where it was, um, where where Ugi goes, might just split a seam now if I don't die laughing first. Who'd have thought that would be a little bit of foreshadowing to his fate? I didn't. Didn't clock onto that actually. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a very, it's a very clever foreshadowing, and even yes. I didn't pick up on that until I until I watched it back. Yes, so they, and um, then, so and then Jack. Pulls pulls the thread and gets caught on the fan, and then boom, the sacks off, and then the bugs just fall into the lava, lava. and that is uh, the end of uh, Oogie Boogie. Thanks. Um, uh, the, the the final end of him is the last bug squished under the boot of Santa. Good stuff. And um, this is where the uh, the ending was originally meant to be different. Um, yeah, it was actually revealed that um, what's his name, Doctor Finkelstein. Doctor Finkelstein, yes. Doctor Finkelstein. Uh, it was revealed that he was Oogie Boogie. Have you not? Have you not heard of this? That was going to be the original ending. This one I've not heard of. That was going to be the original ending. Um, the it didn't get past the storyboard process. So when you look at the deleted scenes, it's just storyboards. Um, yeah. Apparently, Disney didn't like that and. I can see why because yeah, you can't even really see Doctor Finkelstein being a villain. Um, yeah. I, I, mean, so. I mean, I mean, he, he's already somewhat of a villain because he's he doesn't really treat Sally that well anyway. But he's he's nice to Jack, so that, that, that that's true. That's true. Um, yeah. So and um, and and of course and of course and of course that that sort of that sort of moment there the the final battle between Oogie and uh, Jack and then Oogie's demise. Uh, mm-hmm. That's one of the scenes that wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have gone well under Disney uh, at the time because because um, if if the film was released under Walt Disney Pictures rather than Touchstone Pictures, which was a which is a subsidiary of mm-hmm. Disney, uh, the, it, there was there was going to be concern where if it was released under Walt Disney Pictures at the time, it would have um, it would have it would have. Um, it would have forced some of their core audience away from the film, if anything else. Yes, yes. So, so that's why... Obviously, Seth... in the years to come, it was yeah. changed back to Disney. Yeah. Um, that's it. And, and, and it's actually, in the opening credits, it's actually introduced as Walt Disney Pictures presents with the Disney, with the, the current uh, uh, Disney logo rather than the Touchstone Pictures logo that was uh, used back in 93. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. So with all that, so with all that out the way, um, uh, Jack defeats Oogie, saves the day, and gets Santa back on board to save Christmas. And they manage to save Christmas. Yep. And, and then as he's leaving in his sleigh, yep, snow starts to fall on Halloween Town for the first time, and everyone in Halloween Town start doing a reprise of "What's this." Yeah, it's, uh, it's very nice. It's very wholesome. Yeah, you say, and and it finishes off with Santa shouting "Happy Halloween" and Jack replying saying "Merry Christmas." Merry Christmas. And and it all finishes on the hill, on the hill where Jack sings his lament, mm-hmm. and Jack and Sally declare their love for each other, and that's how the film ends. There we go. Nice little movie. Yeah. How, how long did that take? That was only about half an hour's worth. Of yeah. The plot say, this, uh, say, and, and, and given and given some of my previous episodes, we've been going. Uh, we'd end up going through it for about uh, for about forty five minutes to an hour. Yes. Yes. Um, I think that's one of the the best things about this movie is it is very very simple. Yeah. Um, it is only what it's not even seventy minutes long. And I imagine that is because it's stop motion, but yeah. Back in my, my teen years, I thought I was hip and cool, thinking that uh, Nightmare Before Christmas was overrated. I didn't really like this movie back in my teen years. Oh, 
Ah. Yeah, because of the simplicity, I thought it was just too simple. But now that I've gotten older and um, I've been exposed to movies, especially the ones coming out currently, and they're all just padded out. Every every film nowadays has some sort of pacing issue. Yeah. I just find it very, very nice to just watch a movie. Mm-hmm. Just just a nice little simple film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's like, no that's, fat. Yeah. That's like, cause, cause of course, of course, with uh, I say, I say, with me being uh, with me being a with me being a young state, it was a case that uh, it didn't it didn't matter it didn't matter what film I watched. To me, all the films ran at all the films were the, the same length to me. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. No, I did love this film as a kid, but just during my angsty teen years, I thought it was cool. Yeah. And saying to everyone, oh, it's not all that. But yeah. That's then it. I rewatched it this year. Yeah. It's very good. <laughs> that's it, that's it. And, and, and that's the great thing with these, that's the great thing with these older films. I say, if, if, you, if you don't like them as much when you were younger, but when you're watching, but when you're watching them when you're older, especially when you're doing something like this on mm-hmm. on YouTube, you you actually appreciate how much work went into a film like this. Oh yes, oh yes. Uh, I I feel sorry for Henry Henry Selick in a way. This was his first feature film, as you said, and um, yeah. For the longest time, Tim Burton was kind of taking all the credit. It wasn't until I want to say Coraline really where people started to realise. Oh yeah, Henry Selick also done Nightmare Before Christmas. It wasn't a Tim Burton film. And yeah. Given that the fact that this is stop motion, yeah. If I was Henry Selick, mm-hmm. I'd be a bit ticked off. But I say, I say, I say, I say. I mean, I mean, even I was confused. I say, and I think, I think that was down to the way it was marketed because it had yes. Tim Burton's name on it. Everyone assumed yes. he was the director when it wasn't. Yes, yes. He just came up with the the concept, and I believe he produced it. Yeah, he, he was one of the producers, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, much like uh, Henry Selick's Coraline, I think this film is uh, wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. As I, as I've only seen Coraline like uh, once or twice, and it is oh. definitely very unsettling. One of my favourite animated movies. That's it. Um, That's it. Like I say, it is unsettling in some areas, but you... Yes. But, but like you said, you've got to admire the creativity of Henry Selleck. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um... Ah. So with all, oh. that, uh, with all that out of the way, uh, let's get into uh, let's get into the moment we've all been waiting for, folks. The scores. So, yes, man. So as always, uh, the story, I mean, you, the story, uh, I gave it an eight. Uh, you, you said it yourself. It's simple, but um, the re- the reason why I only gave it an eight is because, like I mentioned earlier, it w- it's a story that would have um, that would have somewhat scared some younger kids, which is why the film mm-hmm. got a PG rating. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, of course, the film might have been mismarketed to make it look like a kids' movie, but yeah, there is that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree with you. I did also give it an eight. Um, I think the only thing that I would really change about it is mm-hmm. maybe have something, um, uh, maybe have like Jack and Oogie Boogie meet up before the final conflict. I feel like there's that not really much of a relationship between the protagonist and antagonist. Yeah, that yeah that could that could have worked. I think worked. maybe just one offline of. Um, well, he, Jack does say leave that no good oogie boogie out of this, but I would have liked yeah. a bit more, a, 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 bit more a, bit, a, bit more, a bit more interaction between the two of them before the final encounter. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Maybe find out if maybe oogie boogie was banished or whatever, but at the end of the day, yeah, I don't really care. <laughs> yeah. That's um, it, that's it. We, we, do, we do actually find out a bit more about that in some of the um, in, in some of the uh, uh, was it? Uh, I'm pretty sure Jack mentioned it uh, when he was doing uh, a presentation on Nightmare Before Christmas back at college. Um, was it, or was it Spider Man he covered? Oh, was it? Uh, did it have something to do with the video game? Yes, yes, the video yes. game. Yeah, the Oogie Boogie game. Aye. Yeah. So, Aye. so, 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 so that game, 
so, so the Nightmare Before Christmas game that did somewhat, um, it did somewhat explain Oogie's motives. Yes, and their uh, their relationship with each other. Yes. Yeah. Which, um, which 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 I felt they which I felt they could which I felt like you said they could have put a bit more time into in the film because uh, because the biggest question for me as far as Ugi was concerned what were his motives for being the villain of the film yes yes um, it is very entertaining to watch though still yeah I, I, abs- absolutely very entertaining uh, but I say, I say the motives are that he wanted uh, the motives are that uh, we find this out in the game. That we that he wanted uh, a holiday for uh, bugs or something along those lines, and it was, right. and and the idea didn't exactly uh, fly with uh, uh, Halloween Town, and uh, there we go. Right. Okay. If that was his motives, then I'm I'm kind of glad that they weren't in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Um. I, I at the end of the day, it doesn't really impact the story all that much i just would have liked maybe a bit more yeah a bit more i mean oogie boogie doesn't really turn up in the movie until about 45 50 minutes in and the film yeah. is only 70 minutes long mm-hmm. um and he's only mentioned in passing a couple of times and he's in the mm-hmm. this is halloween song as a silhouette in the moon in the moon yes yes uh, but besides that yeah uh, we don't really get much mm-hmm. of oogie boogie yeah, which takes us on t- very nicely uh, to the uh, the characters, which I also gave an eight. Uh, part of that was down to the part of that was down to the fact that um, uh, part of that was down to the fact that when the film, I was I was I was, ta- I was taking this um, I was taking this as if I was watching it back in 1993 when the film was released. That mm-hmm. uh, that uh, people like me would have been like, okay, so Oogie's the villain. But how does he become the villain? We don't. Yes. Let's see. We 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 don't know. Just from watching the film, we don't know why he's the villain of the film until the game came out a few years later. Hmm. Um. Yeah. No. I also gave the characters an eight. Uh, again, they're a, a bit simple, but um, the designs uh, are wonderful. I love all the character designs. Um. And, uh, and they are very fun to watch. You can definitely see why they've sort of become icons in their own right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, Jack Skellington could pretty much just be the mascot for Halloween at this point. Um, not really got much competition besides maybe Mike, Michael Myers. I was about to say Mike Myers. Uh, Michael Myers. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but yes, eight again for the, the characters. Yeah. That's eight. I see, the, I see the visuals. Uh, the visuals. I gave a very, very strong nine. The only thing that stopped me from giving it a, the visuals a ten is because, um, like I mentioned earlier, I felt that it it could be um, uh, too disturbing for the younger viewers watching the film. Mm. See, I don't really care about the younger viewers, so I gave the visuals a ten. Uh, I'm not a fan okay. of giving out tens, as you know. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's just because I'm a, a huge stop motion fan. Yeah, fair uh, play. It might just be a personal bias, but I can't see anything wrong with the, the animation in this. <laughs> and uh, especially in regards to like the, the little things as well, the attention to mm-hmm. detail, like we said, Zero's nose being a wee yeah. tackle lantern. <laughs> it's just things, little things that you don't notice until many years of of watching it um yeah so yeah Yeah. i love the animation Mm -hmm. yeah especially with the musical numbers i've i I think this is one of the only stop motion animated musicals and i think that the animation yeah does the the musical numbers justice yeah definitely Um, especially what's this um yeah and this is halloween they're Mm -hmm. the two set pieces and oogie boogie so yeah definitely so yeah, uh, you know what? Let's che- let's tweak the score slightly. Um, yes, man, I've convinced you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'll, <laughs> oh, do I? Ah, screw it. I'll screw it. I'll I'll make it a ten oh, as well. Why not? On you go. On you go, Why not? man. Don't Why care not? about the kids. Yeah. Kids I don't think, matter. <laughs> yeah. I think 
I say, I say that, I say that's, I say that's because of the, I say, let's say stop motion animation, like we've mentioned earlier, it's one of the, it's one of the, it's one of the more timeless yes. um, forms of animation. Like, like we've mentioned mm-hmm. earlier with Chicken Run, Chicken Run, Wallace and Gromit, we've mentioned Coraline before. I've, mm-hmm. I even briefly mentioned James and the Giant Peach as well, yes. uh, which yes. some, which somehow is classed as an animated film. It's actually a hybrid. Yes, and Jack Skellington's in that movie, remember? <laughs> as the, yes, he's, he's as, the, as the, he's pirate, the pirate captain. As, yes. as, as that ghost, as that skeleton pirate in, in, in yes. the ocean. Yes. <laughs> I say, <laughs> we that, 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 that is brilliant. Yes. I, say, I mean, I mean... I mean, who knows? If James and the Giant Peach somehow ends up on Disney Plus, it might, it might be there already. It might not. We don't know. Uh, might cover that in a future episode. Ah, yeah, I think it is classes of a, a Disney film. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Was they um? Was a soundtrack? Uh, definitely. Was they um? Was they, uh, was they, I was I was torn between giving it an eight or a nine. I, say, uh, I did uh, last week. I actually had it as a seven, uh, which right. sounds which sounds harsh. I know, but um, uh, one of my main criticisms is that it felt it felt too bloated with songs. Yes, I kind of get what you mean. It's it's kind of like kind of like cats in a way, where it is yeah. and, and and into the woods, where it is just the story is carried by songs. Yeah. So if you're not a musical fan. You'll probably not like this film all that much because it is just song after song after song. Yeah. There's only like with, 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 with five bits minutes of, in between with, each. With with bits with bits of the score here and there. But um mm-hmm. I say I say I say realistically, I can't really see myself giving it any higher than an eight because of the um uh song yeah. overload. But but I'm not taking anything away from the score. I mean, I say yes. Danny Elfman, fantastic job with the score. Yes. Yes. Um I'm probably going to agree with you as well. It's it's an eight. Um, if you're not a fan of musicals, you will probably well. Even then, I think f- people who aren't fans of musicals will like this film still. Um, yeah. Like I said, the songs do sort of carry you through the story. Mm-hmm. They're all catchy, and um, yeah, really, I not a. a and the soundtrack doesn't really have any, like with every musical, there's always like one song that you always skip past. Whereas with that, this, that's true. because of its the brevity of the entire film, some of the songs yeah. are only between one and a half and two minutes long. So yeah, yeah they're just catchy little bangers. And, yeah. Uh, I like them all. And as as for the score, I really like see when Jack reveals himself to Oogie Boogie, that sort of musical sting, that... (laughs) (laughs) What the... Hello, Oogie. That that, that is brilliant. (laughs) That that, that was very... And and that is... That just shows That's how... That's how you make an entrance. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, massive kudos to Danny Elfman for doing... Uh, uh, for, for that particular part of the score. Now you mentioned yes. it. Yes. Yes. Um, so, yes, I'm, I'm giving it an eight. Um, <laughs> definitely between a nine or a ten for those that aren't fans of musicals. But mm-hmm. um, if you're not a fan of musicals, then an eight. Yeah. Just to cater to everyone. Yeah. And last but by no means least, the test of time. I might, I, I might actually change the name of that. Um, I might actually change the name of that uh, category to the legacy. I might change that name to, might change the name of that legacy. category to legacy. Uh, the legacy this film has left. I mean, I mean, I mean. It wasn't a huge hit when it first came out. Like, like you said. Uh, yeah. What did you? It was a. 20 something million dollar budget and it 20, made 90 million back. Yeah, that's it. It, it was it was a box office success, don't get me wrong. Yes, but yes. um but it's compared it's to been, Disney. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's it. Compared to compared to the Disney films at the time, Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Lion King, those sort of films. Yes. Yes. It's just sort of got shunted into the background. Yeah. But, but uh, very but, quickly. Yeah. But even at that, still. 
Uh, the cult following it's gained over the years. I mean, it oh, yes. even got it even got re released in cinemas back in October, just in time for Halloween as well. Which yes, which part of me is a little gutted about the, that I <laughs> never actually went to go and see it when it was um when it was out for Hall- oh. when it was out in time for Halloween. I imagine it's one of those movies that the cinemas are going to be showing every Halloween or Christmas again. They, yeah, they've got their, their choice of yeah. when to I mean, show it. I mean, I mean, it, I mean, it, I mean, especially with the way this year's played out, because we've not had any yes. like major new releases um, yeah. uh, all year, because a lot of them went uh, straight to straight to streaming, straight to Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. Um, some some of them went some of them went to Amazon, some of them went to Netflix. Yeah. So. So it was a case that the cinemas had to rely on some of their older films, yes, to keep them to keep themselves uh, uh, afloat. Thank goodness, yes. thank goodness we thank goodness we're going back. Uh, that's it. We're recording this on uh, December eighth, by the way, folks. Um, mm-hmm. uh, we just said we just heard earlier today. Thank goodness we're going back into tier three, which will mean the cinemas, um, which will mean that a lot of the big cinemas will be uh, open again. Opening. Uh, and I ju- and I just found out why there hasn't been any payments coming out for my Odeon Limitless card. Um, since right. cinemas reopened during the summer, mm-hmm. it's because my it's because my limitless card is somewhat linked to the Air Cinema, which has been closed since March. Oh, right. That's okay. why. That's why. That's why no payments have been coming out of my account for my limitless membership. That's all right. So I, can, yeah, that's... So, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm not complaining. I mean, I'm not complaining. I mean, I mean, I'm yes. still able to use my <laughs> limitless card. <laughs> Huzzah! Uh, yes. <laughs> I, can, I would imagine once the Air Cinema opens up again, which probably won't be until. At the very latest, this time next year. At the very latest, now, now that we've now that we've got the yeah, now, yeah, that, yeah. now that we've got the vaccine um, uh, being uh, distributed now. Um, uh, I say, I say, limitless limitless payments won't pro- probably won't come out until the air cinema uh, opens up again. Opens, aye. Um, but anyway, I say, I say, the legacy. Um, I say, I say, some of the other pieces of legacy this film has left behind. It's, it's had uh, trading card games that we've mentioned the video game as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas even features in two of the Kingdom Hearts games, Kingdom Hearts One and Chain of Memories, where the final boss, where, where the boss of that world is Oogie Boogie. Oh, oh, I've never played a Kingdom Hearts game, but um, yeah. that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, that's it. And, and the great thing is you've got this is Halloween playing in the background of the oh, yes. um <laughs> of the uh of when you're Those exploring segments. of when you're exploring <laughs> Halloween town. And and then and then it, even I found myself singing along with the uh, uh, with the music while going through Halloween yes. town playing <laughs> Kingdom Hearts. Uh because um because uh, throughout the last couple of years, folks, I was uh, I was going through the Kingdom Hearts games for the first time. Before I did my platinum run, September 2019 of uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, I made a lot of fans jealous. In particular, <laughs> one Jack McDonald, who's a big Kingdom Hearts fan as well. I made them a little bit jealous that I got to go through every single Kingdom Hearts game to get ready for Kingdom Hearts 3. Talking of yes. Kingdom, talking of which, I still need to get a copy of uh, Melody of Memory because that's the games I'm one of the games I'm looking to get the platinum trophy on before I get my PS5. Thank goodness I actually, thank goodness I went along with that plan because apparently the PS5's had a couple of issues since it launched. I have heard, I've heard being having worked in a, a toy store for the past month. Uh, yes, I have heard there's been a, a few technical yeah. issues with the P- PlayStation 5. Um, yeah. But so, anyway, the legacy. The the legacy of the legacy of this film, I decided to give I decided to give it a nine. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I'm I'm the same. Um like I said, it wasn't it wasn't an immediate going for gold. Um yeah. it wasn't it wasn't one of Disney's highest grossing films. And um but but the but the fact that, like I mentioned, it received an Oscar nomination for its visual yes. effects, yes, which and, which um, which is very which is very rare for an animated film. Yes, yes, I imagine so. That's probably why they had the animation category because the best animated no many, film, yeah. Not many animated films were getting nominated for awards. Yeah. Um, I say, uh, I say uh, which which will which will actually which uh, I'll actually get into uh, on uh, on a pretty regular basis when I cover the uh, the Renaissance films. Uh, oh yes, oh, uh, yes. 
hopefully hopefully have them covered by this time uh, next year. Next year. Because uh, because once I've got because once I've got the uh, the World War Two package films out of the way, I've got I've got so I've got I've got pretty much all the guests sorted out for the fifties uh, films. You're mm-hmm. one of them for Lady in the Tramp. Yes, yes. Uh, the only slot I need to fill is Alice in Wonderland. That's the only slot I need to fill for the fifties, and then I can focus on getting people on board for the sixties, and then onwards and upwards. Mm-hmm. So. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll just focus on doing one decade at a time, and yes. then, and then, yes. and then we'll take from now. So yeah, so we so with all that, so let's see. So eight plus eight plus ten plus eight plus nine. Divide that by fifty. Times it by a hundred. And we get a final score of a very impressive 86%. Not bad, yes. Rob. Not bad from our first special of this uh, of this uh, show. Yes, yes. Uh, where does that rank uh, in terms of everything else? Um... In terms of everything else, it's it's in the sort of it's sort of like a, in the in the midfield. Uh, in the midfield. In the midfield pack. I'll say I'll I'll, say I'll, I'll, I'll actually get the spreadsheet up. Uh, just Good now. Um, yeah. I know the legacy of this film. It, it's went from sort of a cult following to just, just being a classic now. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I don't know. I don't know why this isn't classed as one of the Disney Renaissance films. It did come yeah. out at that time, um, and I do think it is. Personally, I do think it is better than a lot of those films. So. Yeah, um, I think it should have maybe got a bit of recognition in the, the Disney Renaissance. Yeah, bundle. definitely. Um, right, so so the spreadsheet change that to percentage. There we go. That takes care of that. So compared to everything else, it is tied. It's actually tied oh. with Bambi. Oh, the last film that we discussed, that's 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 rather fitting. <laughs> so yeah, tied for fourth place on our uh leaderboard for the um uh for the Disney films that we've uh, talked about so far. Will will, will any beat Fantasia? Um... Well, <sighs> <laughs> we're gonna say, we're gonna say, we're gonna say Fantasia's the first hundred percent uh score we've we've had. So uh Unless we break the rules. You give and, something and, an eleven. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's a valid. <laughs> that's a valid point. Might actually happen with the uh, the Renaissance films. The only thing we can do is wait and see. Indeed, but in the meantime, hope you guys enjoyed uh, this Christmas special of uh, Kingdom of Isolation. If you did, hit the thumbs up, and if you want to be in, if you want to be a dream chaser like the two of us, hit the uh, subscribe button down at the bottom and click that bell to join the Dream Chasers notification squad so you don't miss anything we uh, that I do on this channel. Michael's going to be back for uh, uh, Lady and the Tramp, Tramp. Uh, which w- which won't be until after which won't be until after New Year. If I'm feeling generous, if if I'm if I'm quick with getting uh, the other films done beforehand, if I'm quick, we might be able to get it out just in time for Valentine's Day. Oh yes, Lady and the Tramp would be a good one to discuss for Valentine's Day. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, so I. <laughs> that's it. So yeah, I say I say end cards will be end cards will be up uh, uh, shortly, so that you can uh, so you can see uh, my previous episode of uh, Kingdom of Isolation, and of course the Kingdom of Isolation uh, playlist, where you can go through all the films we've discussed so far. But in the meantime, I uh, hope you guys have a fantastic Christmas and a wonderful New Year. Uh, Boxing Day, folks, I'm going to have my top 10 games of 2020. There's quite a lot of contenders, so uh, no pressure there. And of course, New Year's Eve, my last video of the year will be my top 10 films of 2020. And if I'm, if I'm feeling very generous, might get Michael on board to discuss some of his favorite films of the year. Yes, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. So, so we've so we've got the rest of so we've got the rest of the year uh, uh, panned planned out. out. And you've got it all yeah. planned out. I've, I've got it all Good planned stuff. out. Of course, uh, schedule subject to change, but hopefully, hopefully we don't have too many major changes uh, before I do the before the, I do the recording of those videos. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you guys next time 
in the kingdom of isolation. See you later, guys. Ta-da.